we've got Marvel's Legend of the Butt Baby here, also called X-Men Blue Origins number one. And we do have the X-Men aficionado in the house, Doc. Uh, I'm a huge Nightcrawler fan. You're more of a Wolverine guy. But I'm starting to feel like maybe I'm going to have to abandon Nightcrawler being my favorite Marvel character and certainly my favorite X-Men character because I can't take much more size spurrier on this shit. I don't know how you've taken this much size spurrier on it. I, I, I feel really bad for you over these last 15, almost 20 years. Chuck Austin and his nonsense and then you had jason aaron i would feel really terrible if i was if i was a nightcrawler fan too so i feel for you sir well let's get into it doc let's talk about this comic book what everyone talking about especially is the art there's a lot of retcons in here but the art it's almost like the artists themselves wilton santos and marcus toe were trying to make this look as bad as possible and they did so much laughable stuff the most laughable thing is when Destiny is having the baby and she's bent over and it looks like the doctor is the quarterback and it says Blue 42. I think Larry King did that one. Absolutely hilarious stuff. This will live in infamy as a meme for a very long time because there's so much bad art in the comic book that absolutely undercuts everything that Cyrus Breer is trying to do that's supposed to be very weightful. It's hilarious to look at. It, it, it makes most afternoon soap operas look oscar worthy obviously the legend of the butt baby is coming from the picture that we're showing here when we describe the art and i will admit fully that women can birth babies on their hands and knees i actually looked up the numbers i don't know why i did this but uh, over 90 percent of women uh, give birth on their back at least in the united states and it's like less than one percent do it on their hands and knees so there are some women that give birth on their hands and knees but it looks so hilarious he looks like he's in the super bowl she looks like she's the center on a football team. Uh, she's wearing pants, which doesn't make sense. The Legend of the Butt Baby will live with me forever, Doc. I don't think I can ever forget this image because it's that good. If you're going to do it this way, you better make sure you get these proportions correct. He is goddamn Reed Richards because he is way too fucking far away or her ass is a lot larger than this photo. You're so saying you he's in shotgun sure. formation? Yeah, he is absolutely in shotgun <laughs> formation so that Raven can go long and and he, like fucking Jerry Rice in the goddamn Super Bowl. I was waiting for Peyton Manning to start screaming Omaha, Omaha. Oh, uh, that would have made it better. Oh, this was this was bad. I give the art in this book two snaps and a twist because I thought it was absolutely amazing. It it felt like it deserved uh, the story that it was telling. The comic book is just a conversation essentially between Raven and Kurt because Professor X was messing with her mind and now she's back. When she had the baby and lost the baby, she's looking for him. And she tells the story about how her current husband, who was like a duke or something like that baron. in Europe. He was a baron in Europe. They were trying to conceive, but then she was having an affair with Azazel. And it turned out Destiny was all about it. And she didn't know why. And it turns out Destiny wanted to have a baby. So they decided to have a kid. And that's how Nightcrawler came in. It's not actually Azazel's. It's not actually the, the Baron's baby. It's actually the two females having the baby together. Yeah. Conceiving like, the baby together, not having, conceiving. I mean, honestly, this story is insulting from like the second page in because it's narrated by a Banff, little night crawlers that Jason Aaron introduced. It is a giant exposition dump after like the first three pages. Not surprisingly, Kurt's like, what are you talking about? You're a girl. Destiny's girl. You can have a baby. And guess what? It turns out, I guess, Mystique also is a gender bender. She's not just like uh, someone that can change her physical appearance. She can actually change her internal DNA structure and can change her sex from female to male uh, when she wants to. I don't believe this has ever been established with the character, but it is size furrier. And I guess he gets carte blanche to do stuff like this. It opens a Pandora's box of how much she can alter about herself and whether or not she can even make her just self a non-mutant could she become an inhuman can she turn herself into a walking alien artichoke and then just be stuck in that form forever or a fucking squirrel and they've never really explored it too much because once you start exploring it too much into the fact that she can literally just become someone else, it kind of breaks the character and it eliminates all any of her real weaknesses. 
in her power set. A whole point of a power set is to have both strengths and weaknesses. She's basically a full on metamorph that can just be anything she wants. It's like Franklin Richards reality shifter, but only in her own body. It eliminates any of the weaknesses of the character. It definitely feels much more Charlie Jane Anders X-Men than Chris Claremont X-Men to me. It really does, because all it is is woman berating a man and talking about the gender spectrum. That's that's what it is. You know what's weird about the book? I think at the end of it, we're supposed to feel bad for Mystique. She's this very tragic character or whatever. And I don't feel bad for this character whatsoever. Her husband catches her cheating on her or on him with destiny, and she murders him. And then she basically covers up the murder for weeks on end until the baby comes. She actually abandons the child in a park so she can go find her girlfriend or her wife or whatever. Who abandons their brand new baby when their fucking wife has the ability to see the future? Which one do you think is a little bit more vulnerable right now? But I ended up hating her more by the end of the issue. And I will say this, she's villainous as fuck. She absolutely is. And you know what? Destiny is too, because all this book did was show us how much of a manipulative fucking twat Destiny was because she knew the story all along and she was just lying to her own fucking wife about exactly what was going on and was telling her a different story than what was actually going on, which was a different story than what was really, really going on. And then at the end, it was all so that their actual family that they would start together would be with Rogue five years later as an orphan. And it also shows how much of a piece of shit Xavier is for like going along with this. He's just like, yes, I am your rental mind wiper guy. Well, apparently if they didn't do it, Azazel would have risen to power and destroyed all the mutants himself. Yeah. Stop that. But, but uh, I guess she never figured out how to stop Orcus and fucking Nimrod. Nope. This is all so very, very stupid. Just, Emer- it's so meandering. stupid it might work doc it feels like a size for your plan it's unnecessarily complicated it is retconning an existing bad retcon it's actually making me pine for the day where it was just as simple as fucking chuck austin doing a bad story in the draco at the end it doesn't actually add anything whatsoever storyline possibility wise to x-men Except for now, Kurt can call Mystique Daddy and Destiny Mommy. It's it's not clarifying anything that needed clarifying. It wasn't fixing something that was already fucked. This is a retcon for a retcon's sake, just so that it could be very current and modern day. Very size for your thing to do, uh, searching for relevancy, because it's never going to come in as actual stories or execution. The other thing you mentioned, this fucking Banff baby thing is one of the most annoying characters I've ever seen in a comic book my entire life. I hate the way he speaks. I hate the way he looks. I hate the way that he is just exposition dumping everything. I hate every single thing about this character. Another reason that everyone should despise Jason Aaron is the introduction of these fuckers. I will never forgive Jason Aaron for even introducing them in the first fucking place. They're, e- they're even more annoying when they don't talk, if that was possible. Fuck this comic, fuck Cy Spurrier, and we even got an opportunity to say fuck Jason Aaron again. I don't know. Somebody that's an enormous Nightcrawler fan, Doc, I, I don't feel like I've got it in me anymore. I ain't got what it takes anymore to stick it out and wait for somebody in the X-Men office to assign someone besides Cy Spurrier to this character. I feel like he's done enough bad stories. He's done enough damage to the character. I don't know. Is it even worth having a favorite Marvel character anymore, Doc? That's the big question. I I, I really don't believe it is because somebody is going to come in, completely fuck that character, undermine everything that was foundational to them in order to fundamentally alter the character after it's done being hollowed out and essentially skinned alive to be worn as a skin suit and traded to 45 different personality types every month depending on who's writing the book or who's writing that character this week the only way you could possibly have a favorite character is if it's somebody that never shows up or somebody that's so irrelevant that it's like they never had an established personality to begin with somebody like fucking pace pot pete 
if, exactly. if you know you might be able to get lucky and they're not going to fuck that character because he already sucks. If you're a comic book fan, it's time to give up on your favorite Marvel character because someone's going to fuck him over. Go find the most obscure character that no one will ever write again and declare that one your favorite one. I'm going with Rick Jones. Doc is going with Pace Pot Pete. And hopefully we are going to be safe on the machinations of fucking Cy Spurrier and all these other dildos. Uh, somebody will come in the fuck up Pace Pot Pete, damn it. It has not been a good time for X-Men. Although we are in the fall of X, it doesn't sound like it's going to get better. Brevoort doesn't know the X-Men. Gail Simone's taking over. We're going to see uh, Jackson Lanzig, Colin Kelly, and all that stuff. But really, the Krakoa era we thought was the low water point because basically the X-Men just became weird queer fanfic. I think this is another example of that. You know, Cy Spurrier coming in with agenda, ruining characters, ruining history, doing retcods. And this has just been the entire time, the story of the Krakoa narrative itself. If you haven't checked this video, I'll definitely see it right now. There's also a link in the video description.